My topic this morning is why we should shout and praise part two. Part one, I said we should shout and praise because of the blood of the Son of God. And I noticed that the blood of Christ redeemed us, sanctified us. The blood of Christ justified us. And the blood of Christ opened up the Holy of Holies so we can walk into. And because of that, we shout and praise. So that's what I said the last time in part one. And part one, I also said we shout and praise because we have a Savior who is the Son of God. A Savior. In him dwells the fullness of Godhead bodily. Our Savior could really save. And he has saved us. That's why we shout and praise so now I've come to why we shout and praise part two. And we shout and praise part two is going to deal with the glory and the power of God. That's why we shout and praise. Somewhere between in the middle of the message, I'm going to give us a chance to experience and act upon the word of God and to experience the glory of God. So there will be prayer in the midst of the ministry of the word. Now again I say it's a little different. And I want you to bear with me a little while. There's a topic that I touched on before. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to touch on it again. Now before I go, I want to show you something here. That God spoke to Moses in the book of Exodus. He said, Moses, go, go, go and tell my people, he says. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Exodus 19 verse 5 says, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me. Imagine God is looking for treasures. You'll be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Like God is begging. He's pleading. I've got it for you. All the earth is mine, he says. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words I want you to tell them, Moses. Tell them that. And Moses told them that. And they had such an invitation, such an offer, and they failed. They failed God. But saints of God, I, I praise the Lord. And I thank you because God gave them the law in order to do his will. They failed. But now God has given us his son. Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that Jesus is the end of the law for righteousness. The end of the commandment. Jesus Christ our savior. And those of us who are saved this morning. All those who are saved. Raise your hands and start just thanking God for your salvation. Oh praise the Lord. Uh, let me tell you what, 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 the, what Peter says about us. Israel failed. In 1 Peter 2 and 9, the apostle Peter, he says about us, he says, you, us, he says, you are chosen, you are a chosen generation. Remember, God told Israel, I bore you on eagles' wings. Chosen. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. That's us. Remember, he told Israel, you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. They failed. Now it is our turn. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a holy nation. Remember, he said to Israel, same word he uses for Israel. You will be a holy nation. A peculiar people, he said that to Israel too. You shall be a peculiar treasure unto me. All the earth is his. Everything is his. 
but he's looking for people. A treasure. That's what we are unto God. And there's a reason why we are what we are and who we are. That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. There is a purpose. There's a reason. Wednesday night, Pastor Mickey was talking about the will of God. There are specific wills. Everybody has gifts and talents. But there are general wills. And the will of God that we should show forth the praises and the glory of God. This is no joke. We are peculiar, special, holy. I mean, that, that's what the word of God says. I remember when, at the time when I used to come here and pray and fast every Friday. For about over two years, I don't know how long I did it for. And one day while I was walking around, walking around, when I got to where, Mr. Simon, where you all stand and sing and everybody, as, as if I heard the Lord said to me, tell them I need them. I mean, God is crying. God is, God is asking for us. Right there, tell them I need them. You remember I told you that sometime before. It was a few years ago, but it's only a couple days ago I understood more clearly the revelation of that. If we do not do it, who would? Who would? This is the day that the Lord has made. This is a final epoch in the human reign on earth. If we fail, but we would not fail. Deeper life will not fail. I hear your praise. I see your hard work. You come on Thursday night. You come early Sunday morning when people are still snoring and you, and you press on. And this morning I can see and feel the praises of God. Let's do it, saints. Let's continue to do it. Mm. So I come to encourage you. But there is something I think that we need to break out. We're doing, we're doing good. But we can do better. And there are some things, there are some things I think in our lives personally, and maybe in our church. I think my glasses are better off without it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe God is healing my eyes. I think that God wants us. Yes. We have a wonderful church, a wonderful pastor, wonderful everything. I think that it, there are things that might be holding us back a bit. I think God wants us to break out. Break out some more. You know? If we don't, who would? We are supposed to because of who we are. Don't take yourself lightly. You just heard what I just read. Hmm? Now the praises that God wants is praise unto him. And I think Mr. Simon mentioned this morning that Pastor Simon said, the praise is for God, up to God. Sometimes I think we kind of tend to forget that. It praise is for God, it's not for us. I want to touch a little thing this morning that I don't know how it's going to go across, but please bear with me. You see, now I know that God is with us. And while we are praising, God is here. But I want to tell you this. You, 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 are, you are carrying God with you. You have God in you. God is not waiting for you to praise for him to come. He is here. He is with you. As you open your mouth, God is all around. You see? You see, but you know, I know, I know what we say that when we praise that he comes down and, you know, and stuff like that. Um, you know, um, and sometimes there's a song that we sing, if you want to see the glory of the Lord, why don't you praise him? Now, it's okay. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying you shouldn't sing it, but what I, what I sing instead is because I've seen the glory of the Lord, I praise him. I lift my hands and praise him because I know the power of his word. I lift up my hands sometimes. You know, we, don't, we just need sometimes to make some little changes. We're good. Sometimes some little tweaking would get us where we are supposed to go. Because, you see, when we say things like that, I wonder how God feels. You know, he said they are praising 
only so that I could come down and inhabit their praises. Is that the reason why we are praising? And God is asking, but I am already among them, living in them. And he's asking, where is my praise? Not to see my glory, but because of my glory. And not only that, but sometimes we, <laughs> you know, we, we, we belittle the time of praise. And we say, well, the first part of the service is to prepare us for the word. So we take everything. We're greedy. We take the praise and we take the word. Yes, the word is coming to us. But the first part of the service is not only simply to prepare us for the word. The first part of the service is to offer up sacrifices of praise to God. And we all can do that. And we all should do that. They are leading here. We are there in the congregation. If you don't know the song, you can lift your hands and say something unto God. But God requires. And he's asking and he's begging. But I know where we, we have gotten this thing about when we praise that God inhabits our praise. And I'm not saying that God is not here with us when we praise. But here, the, the, the Bible says in Psalm 22, 3, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. And this verse has been translated by millions of Christians, different denominations, to mean the same thing that we always say. That when we praise him, he comes and inhabits our praise. Now, there are two main passages that we use to sort of back that concept up. There's a passage in 2 Chronicles where the Bible says where Jehoshaphat was threatened by three armies, and I'm talking about that um, just now, three nations. And when they start praising, the Lord brought ambushes. You remember that? When they start praising. But you see, we missed the point. Before they got to praise, Jehoshaphat and all the people, women, children, everybody gathered together. They cried out to God. They prayed to God. And when they were finished praying, the Holy Ghost came among them and a prophet was given a word, a definite word. You do not have to fight this battle. You have already won it. It is yours. Saints of God. It is good. It is good to praise. But we praise after we've gotten a word. And they came together. And I would encourage you that we need to come together sometimes on Wednesday. The place is little bit, just a few people, but we need to come together and pray and call on God. And when we call on God, we're going to get a word for DLA, a word that breaks through. And when we get a word, then we add to the praise. We're doing good, but we can do better. If we receive a word, let us receive a word. You receive the word by praying. There is a prophet in our midst. That there must be a prophet in our midst who would hear from God and say, you do not have to fight this battle. And when that happens, when that happens, we praise and our praise is even better. And another scripture we use is, and that one used to baffle me. I just knew that when Peter, Paul and Silas was in prison, the Bible said they sang and praised unto the Lord. And at midnight, and then there was an earthquake. And the place was shaken. But the Lord let me tell you something. This message, the Lord dealt with me on it. He showed me things. Yesterday, he opened my eyes. Because I used to sort of stumble at that one. But then, <laughs> miraculously, the Lord brought someone to show it to me. I don't have time to give you the story now. And I went and I read. It's good to read the Bible and not simply think you know the Bible. And I went and I read the passage I read the passage in, in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, at midnight, Acts 16, 25. They didn't only sing and pray. The Bible says they prayed. Hear me? At midnight, they prayed, Acts 16, 25, and they sang praises to God. And the King James has a big comma after prayed. They prayed. Saints, we must pray. And sing praises. And when they did that, the place was shaken. and there was an earthquake. You want earthquake in DLA? Come on, let us pray. Let us pray. Oh, praise the Lord. You see, 
But this verse in, in Psalm 22, 3, that the Lord inhabits the praise of his people, it really doesn't mean, I don't think, and, and, and you can, you know, you can um, pull me up if I'm going wrong. Um, I don't think it means what we say it means. Um, I think what it's saying here, it said, when Israel gave praise, the subject of the praise was God. It was he and his glory they were talking about. Their whole lives were filled with the knowledge and the power of God. He filled their praises because of his greatness. He filled their praises. And I'm going to show you a couple of scriptures to back this up. But before I, sh I show you the scriptures, I remember when I was, I don't know how old I was. And uh, in the West Indies, there was a Barbadian batsman named Gary Sobers. Some of you will remember him. He scored the most runs in test cricket. Uh, Mr. Simon, I think you're too young for that. I think you. <laughs> Gary Sobers, the most runs in, 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 in cricket. Barbadians talked about him. Trinidadians talked about him. Grenadians talked about him. If you have a piece of bat, a piece of wood, you mark Gary Sobers on it. Gary Sobers inhabited the praise of the West Indian people. You understand what I'm saying? He was all we talked about. The, the top scoring batsman in the whole world was a Barbadian, a West Indian. So he inhabited our praise. We talked about him. There was nobody else until the guy came the other day. I think I trained. I then came and broke the record. I don't want to get into cricket. You were a cricketer back there. Lara, yes. But we talked. I know Guy Sobers. And we praised. We talked about him. And so he inhabited the praise of the Caribbean people. Now let me get you a couple of scriptures to back up what I'm saying. That this verse here in Psalm 22, 3 doesn't mean that God comes down and dwells, but that they are, he is in their mouths, in their praise. Psalm, I'm going to get you here a scripture uh, in Deuteronomy 10. Deuteronomy 10, verses 20 and 21 says, Now, I didn't ask them to put up the scriptures on the screen. I'm going to read it to you. In fairness to Brother Z. It's not fair that everybody could look at the screen and see it. So Brother Z is one of us this morning. We all are like Brother Z. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, glory be to God. Hear what the Bible says in Deuteronomy uh, 10, 20, and 21. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. Him shalt thou serve. And to him shall thou cleave and swear by his name. Verse 21. He is thy praise. And he is thy God. That hath done for thee great things and terrible things. Which thine eyes have seen. He is your praise. Gary Sobers was our praise. Now God is our praise. That's what Psalm 22 is talking about. He inhabits the praise. And I'm going to give you a couple other scriptures. In Psalm 78, verses 2 to 4, the psalmist says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. We're not praising him to see. We're praising him because we have seen and because we know. So we need to have the right attitude about praise. I said we're doing good, but we can do better. So Psalm 147, 1 and 2 says, Praise ye the Lord, for it is good. It is comely to praise God. It is pleasant. Praise is comely. And Psalm 47 says, for God is king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. Now, this is very important. Sing praises. When we praise, there must be a consciousness. I, 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 um, there must be an understanding 
I have, I'm going to give you one of my testimonies, which I did before, but I have to give it here today. Because every time I think about it, I praise the Lord. Sing praises with understanding, he says. And Psalm 150, that psalm of praise that tells us to praise in the sanctuary and praise with a psaltery and harp. But verse 2 says, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. When we come to praise God, yes, he is in the midst of us. Yes, he is with us. But we must praise with a consciousness of who we're praising. Praise him for his mighty acts. So let us take a quick look at some of his mighty acts, some of his excellent greatness. Because I want to encourage us as we praise. I want to encourage us to praise with a consciousness, praise with understanding, a deeper praise, a greater praise, a breakthrough praise. And we're going to look at the first one, which we know. All, I'm, all the things that I'm reading to you, you know you've heard. But, you know, we need to be refreshed. The Bible says here, or we discover, number one, why are you going to praise God? He is more powerful than the mighty waters. God is more powerful than the mighty waters. Look at what he did. When Israel came out of Egypt, and the mighty Red Sea was in front of them. They said it was over two million people. They had to get over. They had to get over. And the Bible says, God split the ocean. He split the sea. He dammed up the sides to make a wall on both sides. And he congealed or hardened the depth. He dammed up the side. He made a wall on both sides. He congealed the depth of the sea. They walked through on dry land. It had to be hard enough for them to walk. There was no slushy walking through. And there was no like some things that you see in some of these pictures where the sea is threatening to come back over. And the wind is, no, 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 no. And I will tell you what the Bible says, what, 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 what Exodus actually says. In Exodus 14, 29, the Bible says, not me, but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. My God, I feel like praising right now. I feel like praising. They walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. They walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. Don't let me miss my, 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 my page without my glasses. And the waters were a wall unto them. On the right hand and on the left. Imagine that. Storm think he bad. You know, sea think, wind think they so bad. Huh? The Bible says in Exodus 15, 8, And with the blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright as a heap. And the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. I used to always wonder how God did it. When you said that Israel walked across the Red Sea, I said, okay, if he, you know, if he blew the sea away and he made a passage, I used to say, well, you know, under the sea, there are rocks, right? There are holes, there are caves, there are mountains, there are. Under the sea is not a smooth walk. I used to wonder. But then when I read this, and the Bible says, he caused the depth to congeal. To harden. He made a paved way. And he bricked walls on both sides. Uh, and saints of God, that is why, uh, that is why we praise. So now when we praise, there's a consciousness uh, of the God uh, we are praising. That's number one, the greatness. Number two, he has authority and power over the elements of the earth. Hmm? Commanding a thing to perform a function completely opposite to its original purpose. He brought water out of a rock. They were thirsty in the wilderness. Now you know on earth, if you dig deep enough, you must get water almost anywhere. Two, two million Israelites. They had to have at least 10, 12 strong men who could dig wells. But instead of that, God brought water out of a rock, that they may see his greatness, that we may know and see his power and his greatness. And the Bible says in Psalm 105, 41, he opened the rock 
and water gushed out. It flowed like a river in the desert. Our God. That's why we praise. That's why your job is so important to lead the people of God in praise. That's why we praise. And excellent greatness, number three. He is more powerful than the heavenly bodies. And this is where I want to pause for us to examine ourselves and enjoy the praise of God. He is more powerful than the, than the heavenly bodies. They obeyed the voice of his servant Joshua, who spoke in his name. And the Bible says in Joshua 10, 12, Joshua was fighting the Amorites, and he needed some extra time. And he needed time to finish the battle. And the Bible says, on the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord, and that's what King James says, but another version says Joshua talked to God. Like he went across and he had a conversation with the creator, with the maker. Let me tell you something. I know we could come back tomorrow, but I want this victory today. And the sun is going to go down. I want it today. And God say, go ahead. It's yours. And Joshua came back. He came back. He came back. And Joshua said, the Bible said, Joshua said to the Lord, in the presence of Israel, son, stand still over Gibeon. And you moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still. The moon stopped. Till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a whole day. And there was no cosmic disaster because the master had commanded it. He who made the sun and the moon and the universe, he could do it. Let the scientists argue. Let them argue. Let them say it did not happen. But God who put them together, God could do it. Sun stand. And Joshua had enough sense to say moon. Let me give you a little application, serious about that. A couple of things. When you have a relationship problem, husband and wife, and your wife wants the husband to stand still, you know you got to stand, your, 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 you still too. The moon and the sun have got to sometimes stand. You cannot have a one-sided solution. When both sides stand, they had to. If Joshua did not say moon stand still, what would have happened? Calamity. Calamity. And sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I'm talking about my own self. I want my wife to do this and do that. But how about me? I got to make some changes too. So sun stand, moon stand in relationships. And the other thing is, like I said, Joshua could have waited till tomorrow. Hmm? He could have waited till tomorrow. Now, you know, we don't have to be this... Uh, we, we don't have to have discontentment. But I think what it is that some of us are too happy where we are with what we have and what's happening. We're too satisfied. If a man could talk to the sun and the moon just to fight a war when he could have waited till tomorrow and God gave him the okay, how come we cannot get more than what we've got? Who says you have to stay where you are? Who said so? Oh my God, I'm telling you today, saints, if God didn't tell you no, then go on. If he didn't tell you no, then ask. If he didn't tell you no, if he didn't tell you no, sometimes we get too comfortable. I hear a friend of Jean's from Queens, she said, God is too busy. I can't bother him with this. People say things like that. They believe that they're helping God by not asking and not doing. Uh, but be bold, be bold, be bold like Joshua and talk to your son and talk to your moon. So he's more powerful. Hmm? He's more powerful. My wife always warns me about that. I lose my place. God Almighty. I want us to pause here, saints. 
You know, the God we serve, we're talking about God, we sing a lot about him. I want us to experience him. You remember in the beginning when there was darkness all over? And he said, let there be light. And when he said that, the darkness couldn't stop. The light couldn't. When God speaks, it happens. But we thought that was all, eh? We thought he was, that was great, and we thought that was all until, according to the book of Acts 26, 13, until he commanded light into the light. Can you be that? It's okay to command light into darkness. That kind of easy. But to command light above light shows you the power of God. Acts 26, 13 says, Paul said, At midday, O King Agrippa, Along the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shining around me and those who journeyed with me. His brightness is brighter than the sun. Saints of God. Saints of God. God wants to stop to defeat your Amorites. He doesn't mind stopping the sun and the moon. For you, I want us to take a pause right here and now. I want us to, right where you're sitting, there are problems, there are situations. You know what the problem is. Don't crowd your mind with too many things. Maybe take one, one super thing, one part, take, take one thing. But before you do that, I want you to, the Bible says if you're going to pray, forgive if you have anything against anyone. Very important. Now, it's one thing I always say, I never like to condemn the children of God. I don't. I don't condemn my own children, and they don't behave so, so good all the time. I never like condemning the children of God. You are saved, you are born again, you are a child of God, but there are things in our lives that we need to deal with. And there is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is one of the biggest blockages so I want you to forgive, regardless of who it is. Don't worry. God will deal with them. God will deal with the situation. I want you to forgive in your heart. Forgive right now everybody. Everybody. Forgive. Another thing I want you to do. If you are mixed up with astrology or witchcraft, do I know what I'm talking about? Because when I broke away from the church a little bit, I sent for my zodiac sign, we call it. Astro yeah. No, no, Carol. No, no, no. You send for your sign. I'm, you Piscis, you this, you that, you Sagrada, you Leo, all kind of nonsense. And Christians get hooked up in these things. Not like Pastor Biggie shared one time with, 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 with Gabriel. Um, Josh, it was Gabriel, huh? With Joshua, Gabriel. The Bible says, Caleb. Caleb, the Bible says he wholly followed the Lord. There was no little thing here or thing there. You see things like uh, signs of the zodiac, and you don't, give, give, give me an easy name for it. Um, horoscope, horoscope. Little things like that, they get in the way. You mix in God with something else. If you're involved in Secret societies. These things are demonic. If you're involved with yoga, these things are demonic. You read it up where it came from. I want you to cleanse yourself today and turn from everything, uh, everything that you are involved with uh, that are not purely scriptural, that are not purely God. And get ready. Get ready to be delivered. To stop your moon and your sun. But you cannot do it when you're mixed up. You have to be clean. You have to be clear. So let us do it right now. Bow your heads. Ask God to help you. I'm going to pray with you. We're not done. The message has a half to go again. I'm trying to keep it in the 30 minutes. But this I have to do. Because we cannot be praising a mighty God like this. And going on the way that we have gone on. We cannot. We, how long? How long is it going to last? 
the pain, the suffering, the poverty, how long the conditions that are holding us back, how long the drug addiction, how long the pornography, how long? I don't know your life and you don't know mine, but God knows. So let me say a word of prayer with you first. Bow your heads. Father God, we your people come to you. And we thank you for your salvation. We thank you for our completeness in Christ and our wholeness through the body of Christ. And we accept this, oh God. But I pray that you will help us now to forgive everyone. Everyone, just help us to forgive. Help us to cleanse our hearts from all secret sins, God. And I pray, oh God, if there are any here that are mixed up, mixed up with horoscope, with yoga, with secret societies, with things that are unscriptural or unholy, things that you warn your people about, even if it's Old Testament, but it's happening now. Oh God, help them to give it up now. Those that are involved in lying and hypocrisies, help them to stop. Help them. Help me. Help us as we cleanse ourselves to receive your glory and your power and your deliverance that we can praise you with understanding and truth. God, we need you now. I plead the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood, the blood of the Son of God over all of our souls, over all of our bodies, over all of our minds, the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh God, we thank you for the blood of your Son. The blood of Christ is able, saints. Whatever it is, don't worry. It's gone. The blood has taken care of it. I don't know what you did. In the past, don't worry. The blood has taken care of it. Now, I want you to do something else. Joshua had a conversation, you see, with God. And um, then he came back and he spoke to the son and the moon. If my wife is watching this, I know I'm going to get licks when I go home because she warned me about that. She warned me about that, and I always lose my place. Saints, bear with me a little bit. Ah, I want you to do something. You have a conversation with God. Jesus said in John 14, 13, and 14. I must have it. John 14, 13, and 14. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. The next verse. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now here, he's not saying if you shall pray. He says if you shall ask. This is what Joshua did, and he came back and he asked, asked me to command, to tell. You talk to Jesus now and tell him that's what he said. And you are ready now to ask in his name. And you are saying to that headache, that diabetes, that bladder condition, whatever it is, because the Son of God said that, if I ask anything in his name, he will do it. Like Pastor Simon always says, it's not about you, it's about him. He says, he will do it. Your job is to ask. Your job is to ask. You have confessed, you have repented. Get ready now to ask. ask don't pray to God now. Ask the thing. Is there a demon? Is there a, are there any demons here? I'm serious. Manifest, show yourself. I did that one time. I asked a demon to manifest, and he or she manifested. Manifest yourself in the name of Jesus Christ that you may be cast out. Tell the thing. Since my surgery, in fact, I don't want to tell you my secret on the platform. Again, more licks for me when I go home. But Whatever your problem is, there is a problem that you are dealing with. Because of what the Son of God said, if you ask in my name, I will do it. He will do it, not you. 
So you have a nagging headache that's been pestering you for months. I had to deal with that one time. This time it was my wife. No, 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 she wasn't the headache. <laughs> oh, Lord. I don't know, I don't know who, I don't know who woke up home with me to... to <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. She wasn't a headache. But she had a headache that lasted for years. And when it took her, it was driving her crazy. Crazy. She went to all professional doctors. Couldn't get rid of it. And one day, she sat on the sofa and she cried out. And when she cried, I heard the cry. I heard that cry before from another woman. But this woman was a crazy woman. I heard that cry and I said, oh God, this is no joke. This is serious. I lay my hands on my wife in the name of Jesus Christ. And I started to call on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I started to pray. And while praying, I went into the spirit and I prayed in tongues. And I prayed in tongues. And in the midst of praying, I heard a snoring sweetly. And that was the end of that. That was the end of that. I commanded the saints of God, listen to me. Whatever it is now, Command it. Talk to it. Jesus said, if you ask in, my, in his name now, eh? in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Say the whole thing. He is the Lord. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So if you have a situation with bills or poverty or neighbor or friends, command it. Wife, husband, children. But bow your head now and take a couple minutes. And talk to that thing in the name of Jesus. Tell it to go. Tell it to stop. Tell it to dissipate. Tell it now in the name of Jesus as you are in the presence of God. After we have praised so wonderfully, certainly God is here and his power is here. Talk to that thing. I want to hear testimonies. Seriously. And when you talk to it, don't doubt. Don't doubt. You don't have to feel anything. Some things don't manifest themselves but they're hearing you they're hearing you and they're going because of the name of Jesus don't doubt and don't matter how you feel even if you feel the pain is still there if you command it Jesus said if you ask it in my name I will do it do it now bow your heads it's part of the message it's a different kind of message different kind of message God is able I want to cut it short, though. I want to cut it short, but I can't give you a minute. You could pray afterwards when everybody's gone, but now I want you to exercise your faith in the power of God. What is that thing? I know what is my thing personally. What is yours? Quietly, tell it to go. You deal with it. Tell it to behave itself. If it is finances, tell, it, tell, tell, tell the problem to cease. Tell the bills to be paid. If it is laziness, tell it to go. If it is... Tiredness, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, talk to it. Bow your heads, close your eyes, talk to it in the name of Jesus Christ. As Joshua talked to the sun and the moon. This is different, but this is real. I do this every day, and I've done it. God loves you. Daddy loves you. He needs you. He has empowered you. He's given you his word, your authority. Joshua is not better than you. You are in his beloved son. Joshua was not in Christ. Joshua was just a chosen person. You are in Christ. In the beloved. You are better than Joshua. You are clothed better than Aaron. Clothed with Jesus Christ. Hid with Christ. Oh my God. If we would do it. It will happen if we would believe. Without faith is impossible. And a double-minded man is unstable. Don't let that man think he can receive anything from God. Don't be double-minded. Forget the feeling. Forget you. Listen to what Jesus said. And do it. Do it. Do it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Son of God, we break the powers of darkness. 
We break the powers of evil right now in Jesus' name. We set God's people free. Faith. Faith. I call you forth. Come alive in the minds and spirits and lives of God's people that are sitting here. Faith. Come forth in Jesus' name by the power of the Holy Spirit because of the word that they have heard. Faith. Come forth. Come forth. I don't want to hold up the service. You can do it. You can keep on doing it. We're talking about the excellencies and the greatness of God. I think we mentioned, um, we mentioned three or four. Anyhow, God shows his power again over nations. And I will say this briefly. There is no nation, no power. No Israel, no, no, no Russia, no America. That is great as God. And to prove that, three nations attacked Israel. Three nations came against Israel. And Jehoshaphat, he couldn't beat them. He was too small. He gathered all his people. We talked about that before. And they cried out to God. And long story short, God caused two nations to defeat one nation. And when they finished kill that one nation, both of them start fighting each other, killing each other. And Jehoshaphat and his people watch, stand up and watching and cheering. That is the God we serve. That is the God we praise. We're talking about praising him with understanding. And I will quote one more of his greatness. I think one of the greatest, or if not the greatest thing he has done, I'm going to make it short. He raised his son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Jesus was dead. Jesus was dead. He wasn't in a coma. He was really dead. And God the Father raised him from the dead. Is there anything more powerful than death? Is any of your problems greater than death? I'm not even going to talk, go back to Lazarus, but Jesus, God, we talk about God, whom you praise. He raised Jesus from the dead. He's telling you what he can do for you. And those are in the Bible. And let me give you now my testimony, which I gave you before, quickly. It was 1955. I might have been about seven years old. I told you about that. Hurricane Janet stormed Grenada. Powerful hurricane. Nine of us children and my mother and father were in a board house, a wooden house. I'm saying it again because some of you didn't hear it. And there were galvanized tops. All the houses around were nailed with nails and hammer. Galvanized. And we were in a wooden house. And the hurricane was raging. It was raging. It was, it was just rough. We hear it. It shook the house. And, and, and like you want to tear the place apart. And just a few feet away from us was a raging river. River that busted banks and came on the street. Just a few feet from us. On the side of us was a muddy um, walkway. And we were there in that house. And my sisters, I remember them. Like Jehoshaphat. They cried out to God. I hear them crying out. They cried out and they prayed. They cried. They prayed. They cried. And the hurricane shook the house and made noises. And they prayed and they cried. And then suddenly... I heard a shrieking song, shriek, a big shrieking song. And when I looked up, the whole roof was gone. The whole roof was gone. But you know what happened? I looked up and I saw stars. And the rain wasn't coming in showers. It was coming in sprinkles. I told people I saw stars during the hurricane and they tell me I'm crazy. Because you know what a hurricane is. The skies are black and the winds are terrible. But I saw stars. I knew I'll tell you what it was afterwards. And my father was able now to just push open the wooden door. No top. So the door didn't have anything to stand upon. He pushed open the, the wooden door. And he led all of us children up a hill, up a muddy hill, the river just there. To, to a bigger house. We knocked the house and we entered. And we were safe in that house. Next morning we came back. And the house was flat on the ground. Flat, flat, flat on the ground. And it took me a long time to understand what happened. You see, the same God that split this Red Sea, 
he divided the winds. You don't hear me. He divided the winds. One side came, and then at the back of the at the back of the front side, that's when he removed. That's when he removed the roof. At the last shout of the hurricane, what came after that was the eye. Just give me a minute, my sister. The eye. That's what. That's what I saw. The eye. He divided the wind for us. We walked up in a dark place. There was, the place was bright with stars. In those days, all the houses were built with galvanized. Pieces of roof were flying all over the place. People pick up the top of the house way down the road. Nine children, one was a baby, one was four years old, three years old, one was five, I was seven. Walking up in the dark, oh God, if the wind had done that before, or after, what would have happened? Every time, every time I think of it, I praise God. How did he do it? The last part of the hurricane, the last part of the first side, that's what took the roof away. God held it back. God held it back. Hold back, not yet. Hold back. I went into, then it took the rope. So we were able to get out of the house. And then the second part came and it threw the house down. When I think about that, I don't praise him to see his glory. I praise him because I've seen his glory. I know his glory. I've felt his glory. I live in his glory. Saints of God, I want to encourage him. Forgive me for screaming and shouting at you. I always say I want to be like Brother Albert or Brother Cecil, but I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't when the Spirit of God, when I feel the joy of the Lord. You don't understand. You don't understand what I saw. I saw the heavens. I saw the stars in the middle of a hurricane. Next morning, pieces of houses all over the place. Galvanized could have taken a... As, as a matter of fact, well, my wife will really get me for this. They had a bigger house than us. And I remember, she was living just down the street, and <laughs> she was downstairs. And the river came in. The river came in, everybody oh, downstairs. And somebody was, she was little too, and they were handing her through a window to put her upstairs. And at the same time, a piece of house just come, whoop, and they had to pull her back in. <laughs> you're laughing but it is true I'm talking about the goodness of God the power of God the glory of God that we praise the God that we praise don't give up on God saints whatever it is don't give up on God don't give up on God cry to God you have the word you have his promise Joshua had a word that's why Joshua could have gone and talked to this you know Joshua didn't understand the rotation of the earth and all of that stuff he didn't need to understand that he just wanted the sun to stop and the moon to stop. I remember when my first son was about seven years old, I parked the car and the sun came through the windshield and the sun hit him. He said, Daddy, take off the sun. <laughs> now, I didn't have to give him an understanding. No, no, no. I knew what he meant. So I beat my chest and said, Daddy, go switch off the sun. No, I didn't do that. I just moved the car. He just had to say, Daddy, take off the sun. And Joshua said, Son, Stand still, not about rotation. George, Joshua didn't know all of that stuff. And moon, stand still. And God. So when you pray, when you have a situation, you don't have to understand it. You don't have to explain it. Just tell him what you know. Say what you know. Tell him what you have. Say it the best way you can. He will understand. He will know, saints. He will understand. And he will help. If you have faith. If you, have, if you are willing. If you have faith, if you have willing, at this point, saints, I leave you with, up and with the Holy Spirit. Mr. Simon, I don't know what you guys want to do, but God has a calling on you guys. The, 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 the message this morning in song was just wonderful. You have a job, saints. You have a job. And saints, we have to back them up. We have to support them. We have to stand. We have to clap. Sometimes you see me standing. I might not be saying, but I'm praising God. God is praiseworthy. If we don't praise him, the stones will cry out. We are the last ones on earth. Don't do as Israel. God be with you.